What's up guys? Welcome to more Heroes of the Storm on Color TV and today we're going back into the ESL Major League. Season 2 has started just not too long ago and we're going into another best of 3 series today. We have SK going up against Team Acer and we are starting off on Cursed Hollow with a match where we see the Lost Vikings being played by SK Gaming. Lost Vikings in general being a lot more popular these days and the teams are not only using them in scrims as they have before once the patch hit with the Lost Vikings but now finally they also start to use them in competitive plays. We've already seen that trend for a couple of weeks now but it's always fun to see Eric, Olaf and Baylog jumping into one of those games. And game number one today is going to happen here on Curse Tolos. Let's go right into the game between Team Acer and SK Gaming. All right, everybody, game number one at the ESL Major League. And as you can see, we have Cursed Hollow as our first map. Map number two is going to be Blackheart's Bay, but we are starting things off on Cursed Hollow with BKB for Team Acer to the left side in blue on the map on ETC. Drek here for Acer on Rega. Nasty on Jaina. Blow Your Brain on Illidan. And Sypho on Sylvanas. To the right side of the map, it is SK Gaming with his Ammoni on Carrion. Loving his melee assassins once again. Snitch with the Lost Vikings. Five, Rave, four, aka Kumar three, to boss on Uther. Two, Bakery is playing Bala in this game. Her back to the roots. Well, and our Aragi is playing Murden. So Bakery, my boy, has to show what he that he still knows how to handle that special girl. Because, well, she can be a tricky one, but right now let's see how this game is going to start off. We have, in regards to the talents, block for ETC. We have a couple of times scouting drone picked over block on ETC these days just for the extra vision. Also, of course, a bit map dependent. As already suggested in the drafts earlier, as we have reverberation on Muradin. And in case that you don't really know why exactly that is, then read that tooltip, because what it basically does is it reduces attack speed. And that's pretty cool when you're against right-click heroes. And one of the main heroes heroes that you really want to take this talent against is Illidan. If your opponent is playing an Illidan comp most of the time they're really relying heavily on him so in that case they are trying to go for that Thunderclap build which becomes more and more popular to go straight for that. Right now we have a kill against Olaf. That poor Viking was not only lost but he was also completely slammed into the ground and on the side of Acer in regards to talents we have Conjurer's Pursuit taken on Jaina which is interestingly enough played a bit more often these days. You oh, <laughs> eradicated! And that roaming squad with our Ragi and Zamoni jumping in, bowl to the face, and Carrigan says thank you very much. Yeah, I think she could fall in love with that little dwarf despite all the hair. I mean, usually she was one of the girls going for Reyna quite a lot, uh, but these days I think it's all about that murder and love that we are seeing here. Uh, yeah. In the mid lane, Drakir going up against Snitch. There comes our Ragi, and Drakir is. Yeah. The wolf makes an immediate move back to the gate, and so he should. We have on Lost Vikings the Viking Horde taking Conjurer's Pursuit on the side of Uther now as well. And we have once again a, a bit of a setup at the top lane with Blow Your Brain against Rafe. Not even bothering to do anything, just soaking experience. It's like, yeah, why would I attack something I don't even have to? Ah, now he's baiting. He's baiting first stun, second. Oh, the dodge. Nice move by Zamoni, but our Ragi missing the first storm ball so they don't get the combo off. But we have level 7. Level 7 is already in here. And with that, we're having, of course, an Venom taken on Carrigan. It gives you a bit of additional damage. It's great for heroes, especially when they have melee range, because, well, the radius is not all that great. So on Jaina, it's always one of those iffy talents where you have to go get close to with your opponent. And you don't really want to do that. She's a fragile one. There's the full Thunderclap build so far. But on level 7, I suppose Aoragi is still going to take for... Uh, go for the piercing bolt to hit two targets at, at once. Especially, uh, yeah, I, I still think it's going to be his talent. I mean, we've seen a couple of adjustments by players recently, but I think that's a good chance. Yeah. Snitch already. Oh, Dracula about to go down. Snitch splitting the Vikings now that we are going into the first tribute fight. Nasty goes down as well. Oh my god, like Harrigan dropping, but they get blow your brain after that. And now they have a 3 for 1 trade, and the Vikings are currently soaking 3 lanes. That is pretty amazing for SK here. They are already a level ahead, and they also are about to get the tribute. Saifo is locking them down once, but here comes Aoragi with. Oh, a nice spin to win here from Snitch as Aoragi gets the Stormbolt and starts to stun the target out. Vala is going for the multi shot build still. 
We had an interesting adjustment from the multi-shot build just recently, played by one of the Team Dignitas players, and I actually liked it a lot. I played around with it a bit, and I personally prefer that too. The multi-shot build is basically a build that is meant to give you safety and control, and the control usually comes with level 13, when you use the extra range on the multi-shot and the frost shot to really control those fights and keep those melee heroes at bay. Ah, Draken needs to be careful. Oh, nice block! Ah, the pathing was not with him here. Oh, that was a bit unfortunate. Oh, but Saifo is there with the Envenom on Sylvanas and moves back. Very good kill from the Team Acer player. Very well done here. But coming back to my train of thought, like, uh, the one thing that you really want to try with the multi-shot build is that frost shot, and that's why you need the range. So, as you don't have battle momentum anymore, you don't necessarily hit that as many multi-shots as you did before. So, Chris did replace the Arsenal talent with Manticore, since most Valor players are going for searing attacks on level 7 now anyways, and that means that you are trying to get right-click damage in, and with Manticore you're just emphasizing that a lot, and you take away a bit from that lane pressure that you have, and I kind of like that. The grenades are a bit unpredictable at times, and it's an interesting adjustment, and so far I had very, very good results with that build too. Talking about builds, as we have a failed move by Nasty. Oh, but here comes the stun out. Very nice stun. Good interruption here from Sylvanas. But they need to be careful when Kerrigan starts jumping in, and that's going to happen any second now. Oh, blow your brain! It's completely isolated, but so is our Ragi, who jumped in. They get the tribute. That's the second one for them, and they are still a level ahead of their opponent. So everybody just moving away back to the lanes, and guess what? Down to the bot lane. We had during all of this snitch on Eric. Just soaking the experience at the bot lane and therefore getting the extra experience for his team. But as I was just mentioning, we wanted to talk about talents a bit. And when we're talking about talents, we have now battle momentum taken on Muradin instead of the piercing bolt. Battle momentum, actually a talent that these days is also taken a bit more often on Muradin when you are playing with him. So it helps you to get the additional thunderclap in during the fight, which can be absolutely great. At the same time, we're seeing for, uh, for Jaina something that I personally like. With Jaina, it's really a matter of preference. I mean, in this case, we have no Arcane Intellect taken and no Invenom, but Snowstorm. I personally like Snowstorm a lot because that additional radius makes it very, very difficult for the opponent to move out in time if you hit it properly. Especially if somebody can uh, give you a stun at the start. Blow your brain talking about stun. Has to be extremely careful here. He nearly got into the stun lock, but was able to escape in the last second. So we're having Frostbitten taken on level 7 still for Jaina on level 1. It's Conjurer's Pursuit, as I already said earlier. So in that case, that means you get a lot more mana regeneration as the game prolongs. But with Snowstorm, there is a lot of potential damage that you can do to a clustered up opponent's team. And that's exactly what he's trying to get in now in the mid lane. At the bottom and the top, we're still having the Vikings soaking the lanes. And that is exactly what you're trying to do. When that tributes the map when there's a full push going on somewhere. You are trying to soak the Vikings. Good jump here from Zamoni. Not going for the stun combination just yet. Is waiting it out a little, trying to make sure that he's not going to run into any problems with that. But so far we don't really see that. So uh, yeah, going to be interesting to see if he is going to try or going to be able to get another one in pretty soon together with Araragi here. They get the curse against the opponent and with that they're starting to pressure the bottom lane. And on a map like Cursed Hollow, if you get the curse, oftentimes it really doesn't do all that much for you. Depends a lot on the situation. Vala actually killed in the mid lane here, apparently. But as I was about to say, the big deal here is that with the Vikings on the map, it's extremely difficult for uh, Acer to react to what's happening. Of course, both of the teams have now their heroic abilities in play with the Long Bolt, Maelstrom, Divine Storm, sorry, Divine Shield. Avatar and Reign of Vengeance against the Wailing Arrow Water Elemental Battle, uh, sorry, uh, Ancestral Healing in the Stage Dive together with the Metamorphosis. But still, it's a level ahead, like a level lead for SK, and that's something that they've continuously be able to maintain with Snitch now at the top lane, starting to push that forward and then trying to increase that gap in experience between the two teams. So he's going to get that EXP, push his lane and down to the bot lane. We have him once again with the rest of his Vikings, trying to soak as much as possible. Bakery is already going for the boss here on his Unicorn. Uh, trying to get that. The rest of the team is rotating over too, and uh, well, Asa is doing basically the same thing at the bottom of the map. But still, Snitch is seeing what's happening here, Eric just moving in, uh, double checking what's going on, he's like, aha! And then moves back to the lane to soak even more experience. That's of course always the tricky part when you're running the Vikings, that if it comes to a big fight, you need to get the Vikings together or you won't be able to use your longboat. 
In this case, they're already well aware that they won't be able to do that. Snitch in mid lane was already attacked, so uh, yeah, in this case, it doesn't really do too much. SK is getting their own golem now, pushing the top lane, and they're already rotating. And this time, we're having Snitch getting everybody into play, so the Vikings will be united again. BKB is low. Ancestral Healing just barely hitting him in the last second. He's not dropping, and Snitch is ready for the longboat. Could go for the longboat any second right now. We're having the rest of the team just rotating once more. But we have the three Vikings together. So it is time for a team fight, and they know that too. We're having Uther going for a spell shield, which is actually something that, especially on the Korean stream that we're seeing these days pop up on Twitch, play quite often. We still don't really know how good these Korean teams are. A lot of the games that are being played right now in one of the Korean leagues are very one sided, so it's pretty hard to judge how good the players actually are. But the builds that they use are pretty much the same builds that we are using in Europe, with a few adjustments. And one of them is that Uther in general just runs Spell Shield. And in this case, I actually don't mind that all too much. Of course, if you go for other talents like Shrink Ray, it gives you more control in the fights. But in this case, we're having also Jaina on the opponent's team, and that extra burst damage that you get in with her is always nasty. So going for a Spell Shield here is going to keep Uther safe for quite a long time. And he kind of needs to survive. They play a very very melee heavy team. They have only melee heroes, with the exception, yeah, of course, with the exception of like a couple of those Vikings, uh, I suppose. But that's not really the range DPS that usually comes in. That's more what Bakery is for with his Vala. She's a bit stronger in that department. 13 talent now also available for Team Acer. We have so far 3.25 kills against 6 kills in this game. Hard camps taken all over the map. Again, the tribute coming into play. Keep in mind that this is the fourth tribute, not a single one taken by SK just, sorry, by Acer just yet. Uh, it's healing surge on the side of Dracula on his Rhaegar, not going for the Feral Lunge in this case. And besides that, most of the talents are, is exactly what you would expect. Even on Savannah's, we have the, the build that everybody plays these days. Unless you go for the level 7 adjustment where you're trying to get the extra pushing power in with a poisonous arrow, which in this game is not the case. ETC, now that we have BKB with stage dive in the position where he can start to jump across the map, is trying to go for the split push experience and close the gap in, in the XP. But you can already tell that that's not really working too well for them. I mean, yes, they get a a bit closer, but with the Vikings still roaming the map, Snitch is doing a pretty decent job with that, then that's of course always a very good position to be in. If you can keep that extra talent over your opponent, then you're in a great spot to win a team fight. But he might have to suicide Eric at the top lane. Oh, Bakery! Yeah, well, the wall is still intact, so Bakery gets away. That's of course one of those things. You might have to suicide Eric at the top if you realize that you need that longboat and that you have to go into a team fight and you know that you won't be there in time with Eric now as well. So Eric is already starting to soak those additional uh, additional globes. That's one of the fantastic things that you can do by the way when you're playing with three Vikings and you have good control. You can make the best out of the Viking horde and can just like go on uh, two or three lanes and soak those uh, those globes. That's pretty, pretty damn good. So right now we're having Snitch already in the mid lane with more experience. I mean, of course, that tower here is being dropped up at the top lane. Eric is eliminated. And we're seeing also the wall breached. But it looks like SK is going to try and get Draco here. Stun comp. Oh, they get him once, twice. Oh, but I don't think it's enough damage, is it? Nope, he heals himself with a good ancestral healing. And they are going straight for the position here, trying to break through. Back at home, still dead is Eric, who's already rallied up to the top. Now uh, here comes ETC moving in. Do we see the long boat? Oh, so far we have Simone with a divine shield and the maelstrom being used. Bakery is trying to get away. And here comes Air Jump with Illidan as he's already moving back on his Jaina, but he's dead first. And BKB is now trying to just get the rest of the back of the mel of the damage dealers. We're having Bakery dying here. Eric is trying to get to the fight as well. No longbow just yet. They couldn't use it. BKB on the move back. In jumps our Arag. He's not getting it though. We're having Bearlock dying and Snitch is now moving in as well as Olaf drops. Snitch is the only surviving Viking. Everybody else was taken out here. And that is one of the tricky parts when you don't use the longbow soon enough. As Eric revived, he wasn't able to use it at all and therefore they missed out on a lot of damage in that fight. They lost three of their heroes. I mean, they still did decent, I want to say. Uh, when you look at the situation, how it unfolded, but they could have done so much more here. Especially since we have them with double blood for blood, going against triple blood for blood, by the way, just saying. Taking a page out of the uh, playbook of Team Arthurs. 
uh, with Northern Exposure and Stone Skin, uh, the additional two talents that are coming in for Acer. Nice tribute catch here for them though, and that's tribute number two, so another one would put another curse onto Team Asa. And it's golem time, it's time for the boss once again, with the Norse force taken on Olaf, and of course the dwarf goes for his stone form. It's an amazing talent to have, makes it just so, so, like, survivability increases, like, tenfold when you have that, it's extremely good. At the same time, uh, looking at that, we're having uh, yeah, Snitch Zamoni rotating once again. We're having it down to the left side of the map, uh, the camps taken. And those are the last two Siege Giants on the map, at least for now. 16 versus 17. So with that last fight, the experience lead that we had for SK is starting to shrink a bit. SK needs to be a bit careful. They've been really working hard to get that experience lead, but now with them losing so many players in the last fight, I think three in total, they were a bit, yeah, a bit vulnerable, I want to say. This is a very important curse now. Oh, Snitch needs to be careful. I mean, yeah, they want to have the Vikings with them, and I guess those two towers are going to take care of the boss. Uh, over here we have a boss moving in with the Siege Giant camp, and that's never a good thing to see. Oh, actually, the Siege Giant, sorry, is for the opponent's team, so it helps with the defense. That's cool. That's exactly what you want to see. So, uh, yeah, down here, our Ragi. Is he gonna go? Are they gonna try and eliminate BKB here? Who are they gonna get with their stun comps? Amoni is there. He's waiting to jump somebody. Here comes the first stun. They're moving in. One stun. Power slide already happening. At the same time, Zamoni is not jumping in just yet, but the ancestral healing is hitting BKB. Here comes Zamoni. Goes for his Maelstrom and goes straight into it. Illidan jumps in. BKB super low. Divine Shield on Bakery. He's jumping in against Snitch. Is going straight for the longbow and they kill Jaina, but they lose Kerrigan in the process. Says all the heroes of Ace are extremely low, but we have one of the Vikings die first. Illidan, on the other hand, is making it, and Rega is eliminated too. And that suddenly puts so much momentum in the hands of SK as Asa is moving back already. And SK takes the tribute, they curse Asa again and steal the bruiser camp away from them, moving straight for them. Very, very good fight for them. Uh, we have them with nearly a level ahead once more, and they're moving into the middle of the map with only Sylvanas and ETC still alive in another 14 seconds on Jaina. There's a very good chance that we're going to see one of the keeps drop now. The hard camp is pushing in, of course, and our Ragi and his boys, they're not even bothering with the second tower. They go straight for the keep, and they say, yep, this keep belongs to us. And there we go. All your bases belong to us, and this one is the first one we take. Moving back now already, but Saifo, he's not going to chase too much here. Without Rhaegar, without their healer, they won't be able to, to go for that. They can't really commit to it. We're having a bit of damage already on the keep at the top lane, and uh, besides, there are camps on the map now that you can take, and Snitch is already moving in with a fat guy. Oh, and the ass crack, dude, like, oh my god, like, that's more than I wanted to see, dude. No, please, don't, don't do it. Don't do that, Olaf. Don't be that guy. Ooh, holy. Oh. Somebody buy this man some pants. Now I finally understand why everybody wants to go for that pajama skin because it covers the, yeah, it covers the uh, the interesting parts of Snitch. No Snitch, we didn't really want to see that. So please don't do it again. Saifo on the other hand, well he oh good dodge, good dodge. That evasive fire definitely coming into play for him here. Benediction of course, level 20 is also nearly ready. And with that, this is going to be. Very tricky for Asa to come back. I mean, like, they meet an entire level. We have already the Ragnar Rock and Roll. We're seeing the Bolt of the Storm on Vala with the Muradin going straight for the rewind over the Hardened Shield. Karrigan is also trying to use the mobility with Blink, as we see in this case at least the Bulwark of Light being taken on the side of Uther. Not going for redemption, which is also a talent that we oftentimes see. Right now, we have seen them jumping towards the top lane. The bot lane is also being pushed, by the way, just on the side note. But yeah, that fort, I mean, oh, that keep. What can you do if you don't have your level 20 just yet? Committing to a fight is always risky. That's kind of one of those loss loss situations. And the first one is down, the second one just died at the bot lane. BKB is moving in and makes sure that at least that last keep is not going to suffer any damage just yet. And yeah, so far we're having in the mid lane again, Aragi getting ready, leading the charge. I really like the setup that they have. In a lot of those fights, it's all about where you're positioned. And so far, they always kept our Ragi at the front, making sure that Tank really leads the charge, initiates with a Storm Bolt. Carrigan is jumping in. Bakery with a Frost Shot, supplying a bit of control. Oh, but Bakery suddenly a bit out of position. Needs to be careful. Water Elemental on him already. And boom! Here comes that Blood for Blood. And goodbye, Bakery. That was a 
a fast one, and level 20 is ready for them now as well. Here comes the kill against Muradin with the Nexus Blades that we're seeing on Illidan. He can start to hunt them down. Really, uh, I have bad news for you, buddy. Newsflash, you're not going to make it either, because you are already hunted down, and once Blow Your Brain is ready to take you on, you're going to be slowed by the Nexus Blades, and that's happening just now. Three heroes dead happening because Bakery for a second was out of position and did not see ETC there. Yeah, that is unfortunate now for SK because, well, guys, that advantage that I was talking about earlier, it's gone. Well, let's be fair and say that they didn't lose a keep yet, but this one is going to be the first keep. And let's see how they're going to carry it from there on. A tribute also now ended into in the hands of their opponent. We have the deafening blast on the side of Sylvanas, Winter Mute, and Hardened Shield. So that really backfired pretty hard. SK was playing a great game with a lot of control, exploiting the level 20 talent, and then all of a sudden it just backfired as Bakery, their damage dealer, like, gets blown to pieces by the Blood for Blood and by the Lockdown. Couldn't do anything here, and from that on, on it was just like spring cleaning time. Team Ace are jumping in, taking one hero after another, and they did very, very well with that. So, right now, we're going straight into the boss fight up here at the top. Uh, Acer, can they go for it? Uther is not with them. There is no Uther. And there's the first one of the Vikings that goes down. Uh, BKB is moving in. And blow your brain with those Nexus Blades is doing his thing. But they get the boss. Uther is finally there, but it's already too late. They go for Drakia. Oh, and Rega heals himself. The Curse Tribute is also ready. The kill against Muradin Araragi is dead. Snitch is trying to get damage here with the Longbow. Nice! Done by Zamoni. I really like that. That Primal Grass was awesome. But it was just not enough. It was a small distraction. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, Bakery with that nice, nice move here. What an amazing reign of vengeance. They get three hero kills as a result and they don't stop there. They take Drakir down to... That was extremely well done. First Zamoni locking them in all in one spot. Then they move into into that bush there. And Bakery just drops the Reign of Vengeance on their head and completely obliterates them. A team kill and that initiates, of course, that triggers the attack of Team SK Gaming. They're going to try and end the game and they should be able to make that, to pull that off. That is, yeah, that was pretty damn good. That reign of vengeance, Bakery, he made up for uh, like for his death earlier on today. That was a very, very nice heroic ability that he used there, and it definitely started that complete team wipe that we saw from SK Gaming against Team Ace. So game number one on Cursed Hollow ends in favor of SK Gaming. They take the lead in the best of three series here at the ESL Major League with a victory on Cursed Hollow. Congratulations! But of course, it's only the first step for this best of three series. They need to win at least one of the next two maps to take the best of three. SK Gaming takes the game. Really nice match that we had there. Super entertaining end as well. And as you can see now, SK in a 1-0 lead against their opponent. The second map is Black Hearts Bay. And we've been talking a bit about Lost Vikings in our last match. But another hero that is of course always great to see in the game is Kerrigan. Kerrigan making an appearance in the first game for SK Gaming. And now in the second one, they are going to use the melee assassin again. And Kerrigan has of course a lot of control and lockdown. And that is one of the things that she brings to the table that they try to use on Blackheart's Bay again. So we're going to go into game number two here at the ESL Major League and uh, find out which team is going to take it here. Will SK prevail with a 2-0 victory against Acer or is Acer going to start the comeback? The second game of the ESL Major League starts on Blackheart's Bay and currently between SK Gaming and Team Acer we are having Acer in... well they are behind. SK is in the lead, they just won the last map, they won on Cursed Hollow after a very interesting ending and now we're having Acer of course under a lot of pressure since they need to win this map to get a chance to take the best of three on the next map which would be Sky Temple. BKB is playing for Acer to the left side on ETC, we have Blow Your Brain on Illidan so they're playing an Illidan composition again with Nestia this time on Vala, Siphon, Sylvanas and Drakia on Uther. So an extremely strong Illidan comp with uh, SK playing Aragi with Muradin, Zamoni on Carrigan, sounds familiar. Snitch on Jaina, Bakery on Tacita and Rafe aka Komato Boss on Rega here. So yeah, all of them are rushing straight towards that watchtower except for two heroes that are located down to the bottom of the map and taking that bot lane. Uh, there we have Illidan 
and also Tassada. Yeah, but up here at the top, Escape at least won uh, the vision fight. Oh! <laughs> yeah, the haunting wave bringing Sylvanas back to safety. But that was at least a nice start to the stun. Of course, Auragi, once again with the reverberation on the level 1 talent. Reasons are pretty simple, we talked over this already. And they move with all four up to the top lane to get the full lane experience there. So it's just like going from lane to lane, getting the experience and making sure that you don't miss out on too much. Now we have, of course, that yeah, that chest already there. It's a mix up at the top. It's an even split. At the top we have the five coins taken already by Acer. And down here it's our Ragi together with Bakery going for the second chest. And they're going to get all those five coins as well. Blow Your Brain is the only one there. Bakery is rocking that Mecha Tacita. And it's not only about that mount that you have for you, just like going for the jet, but this is also that pretty damn cool like the storm I really like how it changes Blizzard in general is doing a very good job with the skins what I really love about it is that they rework a lot of skins in general where they just say like all right that skin was already pretty cool but we want to add something even more special to it as they did with the Mecha Tassad I really like that and I think a lot of players appreciate that too right now in terms of talents uh, I feel the only thing that we really need to point out is the difference between uh, the build that we're seeing for Jaina in this game and the one that we saw last game uh, Cypher already moving away here, but we have the deep chill on uh, level 1 with the increase, uh, yeah, increasing the slow. It's always kind of a bit nice, but you you wonder oftentimes 10% how much is that really. And at least Acer in the last game decided that it's not enough to really use that talent, but instead they went for the additional mana regeneration, which is fair enough, I suppose. Driving to the top lane, Jaina starting to pressure BKB back, oh, and getting that Blizzard into... Great, of course, to get siege damage in by eliminating uh, creep waves. Oh, they try to get Zamoni now, and BKB is waiting for a power slide. doesn't get it just yet, but he goes straight for Aragi with a face melt. is already pushing it back as Cypher is delivering the damage together with Nasty moving in. The heal from Rega against our Ragi's Dwarf. And he's just barely able to get away there. Same time though, we're having Immolation taken on Illidanus, the second talent with the Echo Paddle coming to play for ETC. And also, of course, with those additional talents for Multishot on the side of Vala. Another talent here for Thunderclap. Thunderburn in this case on the side of Aragi going for that build once more. Battle Momentum was the weapon of choice in level 7 that he used in the last game. For Kerrigan, it's no surprise to see... Uh-oh. To see Envenom. And I thought for a second that BKB would move through the vision just down here. But they're going for the camp instead. Trying to get the steal against the two coins of their opponent. And BKB, is he trying to move in? He can't really do anything here, even with the rotation. He is so far out and he gets locked down. That's a lot of free damage that he's eating. And that is not pleasant because the well is down now, so he has to be careful. It's always nice when you get that. It's pretty cool for, uh, by the way, Team Asa that they uh, killed already half of the hit points on the tower over here. We've been going over this a lot in the past, but just to reiterate that once again, if you turn in coins and then you get the first chip in and you're already in a position where you took down at least half the hit points on one of the towers, it means that all of those cannonballs will completely destroy the fort in the mid lane. If you don't get that much damage in, then the fort is still alive and you're, if your opponent went for a mule, they can heal that up. And, well, especially on the side of SK, we have the potential for Mule, with, of course, especially uh, Tassadar here. Uh, nice pressure also at the top. The more structures you take down on this map against your opponent without the help of the objectives, the better for you. Draco is trying to go for the stun. Snitch needs to be careful, get stunned once, but the counter stun here as Zamoni is helping out his mid teammate. Uh, there we have the talents, but no Mule taken, actually. Uh, Dracula is getting very low, Araragi jumps in the kill against Utha and now it's hunting season. ETC is one amongst the many and yeah, those many are all enemies. Wow! He gets a kill in against Jaina, gets a counter kill, that was impressive. It's a 4 versus 2 fight and he is able to still eliminate a target, that was very well done. I don't think that LSK expected that at all. So it's a 2 for 1 trade at the end of the day and I think they are pretty happy with that considering how that fight went in general. I mean, just now we have SK still establishing the, another lead in experience for themselves, but that was pretty cool. Double battle momentum at level 7 with Murder and Kerrigan as Blow Your Brain is being attacked here, but the rest of the team is starting to rotate in, and with the mana pool extremely low for three of the heroes, SK had to move back behind the wall. 
All of the action at the top and mid lane and down to the bot lane. Bakery still with five coins. Nasty is in position here. We're having for them now also Frostbitten taken after the Arcane Intellect. And right now we're having also yeah, follow through against uh, Searing Attack, Cleanse, Protective Shield. The talents that you would expect. Pretty stable builds that we had for a long time right now. Blizzard of course going to do their best to really make sure that the talents or the builds in general diversify a bit. And I feel on a lot of the heroes you have very very cool builds and the different builds. Vala being one of them. There are three viable builds right now. You can go for auto attack depending of course on uh, the team composition that you run with. The multi-shot build is still very popular even after battle momentum got taken away and the searing attack arrow build is also something that you will see quite often. At the same time Jaina is another example. We have so many different level 4 talents that are taken and even a few variations on level 1. Bit of a staring contest between Auragi and Nasty and oh Nasty blinked. Nasty blinked our Ragi one. Alright, so they're both trying to turn in right now. 19 coins on the side of LSK. That's the main reason why we're having currently the entire Acer line up here in position because they know that with this many coins on the board, there's a pretty high chance that LSK is going to try and turn those in to uh, make sure that they get rid of them as fast as possible. They want to have the, the 10 though, and that's where they get it here. Stage dive already chosen. Illidan is waiting. Only Trixler is hoping that it's the hunt. Everybody else is expecting Metamorphosis. And yes, after a few seconds after a bit of a thought process I want to say he goes for that bakery is low loses five coins gets sniped by Sypho and BKB even jumped in with the stage dive because he said well there's a good chance that we want to get him like this so let's use that ult here at the top of course they're going to neglect that fort for a few seconds and that means that the fort might be taken out it's not a big problem though so and at the bottom lane there's already an exchange going on and Sypho has Sylvanas here and Sylvanas immediately goes for the fort and starts to disable I like that a lot if you actually position Sylvanas next to one structure and then you attack the second one what you can achieve with that is that you um, can easily just like disable two of the structures that's pretty cool your Q disables one your right click disables the other in this case the hard cam can still push and SK with a move straight for the boss they're saying hey boys we know they're all at the bottom of the map Cassada is there he can hold them off for a bit longer so let's go for the boss and start to get something pushing the top lane and they should be able to just barely sneak that in in time unless ETC is able to move in but yeah they abandon it they abandon the boss they see ETC and they abandon it they're trying to go for the fight at the watchtower not getting it just yet Sypho is low gets poisoned with the Envenom but we're having now Arkan also in play oh Zamoni has to be healed but Wraith is a bit low Maelstrom already being used and once again Aragi jumps in goes for the Thunderclap Divine Shield on Sypho he's moving back with his Sylvanas blow your brain is jumping in and again and Aragi is down losing all of the coins Zamoni Zamoni is dropping too oh god all oh, those esports dollars that we are seeing for Acer right now they have already 12 coins thanks to that encounter they got a second ghost ship in just a few seconds ago and level 13 is now on the board for them too with the frost shot the evasive fire with also the shrink ray and now the last two talents coming in on etc who is going for face melt in this case and giant killer or is it going to be the evasion talent probably evasion talent on illidan uh, they have the damage i don't really think that they need him with the giant killer in this case and staying alive in those fights is definitely gonna or should be his priority i want to say so we have all of them trying to go for the turn and actually it is only draco who's going for the turn but bkb jumps in to help his buddy out uther is already on the move back but our ragi is on his way what is that friend or foe taken interesting choice that i didn't see that coming i have never seen that in the competitive play like in months Ah, uh, but Blow Your Brain is already starting to jump in. So, yep, the chests are on the map and they're going straight for there. That is an interesting one. That is a very, very interesting talent to take there. I did not expect that. I mean, I guess when you try to jump out of a fight, it really helps. So, we could see that come into play. You give up. I mean, it's actually not too bad. I mean, if you're spread out and you're playing with a lot of ranged characters and they are away from the opponent, jumping away as an escape mechanism is, isn't too bad. As I said, the thought process is still very much the same. It's not about doing more damage. It's about staying alive. So Giant Killer was already a talent that he was very unlikely to take. And instead of going for the second evasion talent, he just decides that it's better to jump out of the fight entirely and stay alive for a bit longer, give Uther a chance to heal him up again. Interesting choice there. I haven't seen that at all, but yeah, why not? I mean, 
could go for it. Right now we have 13 versus 14 with a Skay starting ah well to catch up in experience to the extent where they at least fight on high level with the talents themselves. Feral Lunge taken, Prescience on Tacita which will uh, enable him to go into Dimension of Warp then on the next talent and keeps him alive a lot longer in those fights. The Thunderclap build again with the Thunder Strike, the Thunder Burn and the Reverberation. I feel they should rename that talent and uh, call him the Thunder Slow or something like that. I am not quite sure, but like then you have like all Thunder talents. We can go for maybe a Thundercats theme or a Thundercats build. That would be pretty cool. Doesn't make much more sense. Or like doesn't go any farther than there's being a lot of thunder in the air. But yeah, double sprint now on Jaina and Kerry. And good for the repositioning, especially on Jaina since she doesn't really have an escape, except for her ability to slow her opponents down, but that doesn't really do all that much for you in a team fight if you're trying to get away. Uh, so once again starting to jump in here for the turn in. BKB is just waiting. Zamoni is doing the same. Trying to make sure that nobody sees him. Sneaky carry again. Uh, getting on horse already. Aragi uh, eating some free damage. Doesn't like that too much. Doesn't have stone form yet, but with that nice healing ward in position, they are doing a decent job at keeping the hit point pool up. Once again, Storm and Vision has been dropped already. And BKB is waiting for that power slide. Oh, the lockdown against Drakir, but they're not going for Uther just yet. And in they jump. Snitch is getting healed. Jaina just barely escaping in that encounter. Acer is trying to get the kill against Kerrigan. Kerrigan and uh, Illidan die at the same time. The melee assassins are already out with an immediate drop on the rain of Vengeance. So the Nasty is already moving back. It's making restarting to drop alone at the same time. Rafe is jumping in with a feral lunge, trying to go for Nasty, but he gets dropped first. Nasty is extremely low, and Snitch is trying to get the kill, and he does. Bakery moves away, but ETC with his power. Was like trying to take him on it's a 343 but bakery is extremely low here snitch can he do enough damage the jump bakery is still alive holy bakery nope Cypher taking him out and now all of a sudden it's only Bakery and Snitch but Snitch might get the counter kill against Uther. No, he has the heal ready and here comes Cypher again with a wave jumping in and dropping Jaina just splattering her all over the ground. Acer, Cypher now with the wave taken out really doing well there. This is a fun battle that we saw. We have Blow Your Brain at the top, eliminating that wave with this immolation. A triple Blood for Blood in that fight, of course, really helping out as well. I feel without that Blood for Blood, it would have probably ended in the uh, favor of the opponent's team. Keep in mind that one of the things that we didn't really see too much is Illidan's talent on level 13 that he took there, going for that extra jump that he has on the dive. So <laughs> he died a bit too fast. Both of the melee assassins are actually not really making it here. That was quite something. Oh, Simone! Oh, that heal! But it was too late. Yeah, these last stitch efforts by SK, they're trying. They're really trying, you can tell. They're trying to catch their opponent off guard at some point and uh, capitalize on that. But now they're getting hunted down one after another. It is hunting season uh, in Acer land. And yes, Bakery isn't making it either. That mecha Tassada is blowing into the next dimension. BKB is on his white wolf riding in and trying to take down snitch but they are not getting that just yet a turn in for SK Aragi is jumping back right now but there's still 15 coins on the side of Asa and they are relentlessly pursuing that goal going for the tie they're trying to drop the keep here and with Sylvanas that is of course an easy easy task so they get that even uh, yeah, even Illidan surviving here, he ate a lot of damage in that last encounter, but that didn't really matter to him too much. They steal the camps away, they have total map domination now. We have level 16 finally for SK, which puts Blood for Bloods in their hands. Two of them, the Dimensional Warp as well as Northern Exposure on Jaina, and the Stone from finally for Murden. But still, this is getting... Uh, very annoying. BKB, yeah, well, he gets cleansed here. Very well done. Nice job by Drake here. No stuns coming to play, but this is a three level lead that we're talking, okay? This is currently 11 kills against four. A three level lead. Sure, they are on the same talent, so that's why SK is trying to fight, because they know it's now or never, and oh, if, maybe if they get a kill here, they might have a chance, but it's a bit unlikely. Oh, Kerrigan is already dead, and now Illidan is jumping in and is trying to have a great day here. Blow your brain, they're going for Aragi, all of them, and goodbye, the captain is dead. Oh, captain, my captain, 
And in this case, Aoragi could not turn the tides of the battle. He was leading the charge together with Zamoni, but they're not getting the kill. Blow Your Brain is diving one of his allies to get a bit closer to the enemy. And in this case, he's just creating space for them to turn in, and that's exactly what they're going to do. We already have the first few giant siege camps down to the bot lane, starting to do damage against the shield here. And as you can see with that turn in, that is... Well, where's that turn in? They need four more. There's Blow Your Brain starting to move in. And this is going to eliminate, of course, the keep out the top lane and get a bit of damage in against the shield, or against the core too. So that core is really going to suffer with the next ghost ship. And there it is already. That barrage is going to do some work. It's not going to kill the core, not just yet, but it's going to severely damage it. And that is, of course, a problem. A big problem, first of all, because now you are very vulnerable to your opponent jumping in and trying to backfill you. And also because we still have that 3 level advantage for Asa, and in this case it means that they have a level 20 talent. Could at any time get the boss, get more coins, they already have 14. So with 14 coins, more taken by Saifo, well, if you paid attention in math, then you know that they don't need too many more. They have 18 coins already, that's 20, that's going to be an easy turn in for them. And the next turn in is going to drop the core for sure. Only 2% damage. I expected more, to be honest. I didn't really... Wasn't another structure on the map that I didn't see? Maybe it was still a tower at the bot lane that I didn't really see. Because the shields were already down. I really expected that to eat a bit more damage than that. But still, they can turn their 20 coins in. They have 22. SK has to somehow prevent that. And they will try. They will try, but... Fighting with a 3 level disadvantage, the stats alone are going to just completely uh, demolish you. And if you then also don't have an opportunity to make up for that talent that you're losing, then you're in even more trouble. Here comes the turn in, and well, if they don't get that somehow cancelled, there comes the cancel, they get the cancel. Three coins left. Harden shield, demonic form, wailing, wailing arrow got upgraded into the deafening blast. And the Nexus frenzy is there for Vala with a storm shield on Uther who decided to neither go for the bulwark of light nor for redemption but yeah there's again <laughs> the siege giants and together with those catapults they are starting to put the pain on the core and yeah that starts to hurt and that starts to hurt a lot and SK is in a situation where they can't win any longer if they move back to defend the yeah, the turn in is going to eliminate them they need to win a team fight before the core dies core is at 46% core is at 43% and it's not going to get any better another catapult joining the fun 24% on the core team fight is going on Meredin is down Zamoni is being attacked next they're already jumping in to take bakery down and here comes the second kill it's a five versus three they take down sylvanas but that doesn't really help them anymore because this is going to finish the game this is the match ladies and gentlemen we're going to see a tie in this series as the core is already at so gg as sk gaming loses here on blackhearts bay asa ties the series up and we're going to see a third game on sky temple between the two teams here at the esl major league yeah, Acer with a really good effort here, taking the second game and forcing a third map. And this is going to be Sky Temple. So in the ESL Major League, in the series here, we have a tie and SK Gaming is going into a very, very different build this time. They are running an Illidan composition on Sky Temple against Team Acer. But Acer has a bit of momentum going for them now. They won the last map and of course they are very determined to win the second one or the third one, I should say now as well. And therefore take the series with the 2-1. SK will have to prove that they are better in this on this particular map now and this is why we're going to jump into the game right away sky temple sk going up against acer the last map in the series the last map of the day actually not true last map of the best of three series not of the day we got a lot more where those characters came from yeah, but the last game for the best of three series here at the ESL Major League between Acer and SK Gaming happens to be on Sky Temple with BKB on ETC, Drake here on Uther, Nasty on Vala, we have Blow Your Brain on Sergeant Hammer and Sypho on Tacita. SK on the other hand, they won on Cursed Hollow and lost then later on on Blackheart's Bay. Now they play here with Araragi on Diablo, Zarmoni on Illidan, Snitch on Jaina, Bakery on Sylvanas and Rafe aka Tokumato Boss on Rega. It's a pretty cool game actually, it's a really interesting comp that we see right now and that's for a very special reason because we now see SK Gaming with the comp and Bakery, you little coward, look at that, even before he moved in he already sent that weight over. Pretty smart move actually, um, they also call it the French defense 
and you don't have to activate that wave so he can always move in but if there's something is actually like smart so good move by him and jokes aside talking about the talents we have on level one devils do now this is once again of course interesting because oftentimes we're looking at the talents and the standard talent here is still soul feast which gives you the increased regeneration that you want to have but devils do is a talent that you oftentimes have and you also take it with a uh, additional souls or endless souls on level seven um, there are a couple of builds that you can really use with a hero. They attempted snipe against BKB, but yeah, they chose the wrong target. In that case, the power slide already moves him away. And up to the top lane, we have a try with Blow Your Brains on Sergeant Hammer. Drake and Nasty starting to push against Bakery, and Bakery doesn't like that too much. I mean, yes, Sylvanas is great to push in a lane. She's also great at eliminating a few of those extra waves. But going up against those try lanes, that is extremely annoying. Uh, looking at the same time now in the mid lane, uh, what exactly are we having there? We are seeing uh, yeah, the rotation just happening and the top temple seems to be the focus of attention for both of the teams right now. Uh, Sylvanas is there, nasty. There's a lot of mines by the way in that bush. Oh, Draco is trying to do his thing. Ah, oh, nice. Gets two hits in against Nasty with his blizzard. Very well done by Snitch. Very well done here actually. So good job by him. We have uh, to the mid and bot lane still both of the lanes soaked. So nobody goes for the temple here in the middle. They're just, well, and as I say, BKB starts moving over there. But yeah, up to the top, that's where the real fight happens. That's what the teams are currently trying to do their thing and get the shots in. And so far, SK is actually doing really well with this. And they're trying to take Nasty down now too. There's still Drak here. He's already slowing down Snitch with another stun. Blow your brain as to activate the thrusters. They are in cooldown for now. We're having level 4 hitting faster for SK. Going for the Arcane Intellect on Jaina. We've been talking about those various builds that we see on those heroes. Yeah, but still... Oh, Snitch! Oh, well, that is... Ah, unfortunate for him. But still, of course, Amplified Healing, Snitch down, is the first blood in the game. And that means that we have a bit of an imbalance in uh, Heroes up to the top, but we already see a rotation from uh, Rave, Aragi and Bakery, now with three up at the top again. They abandoned the mid temple, and at this point, I have to say, we are seeing... Uh, yeah, we're actually seeing a in a pretty decent spot. I mean, they are close to the level 6 uh, level. <laughs> so often you really want to say one thing and you just come up with talent for some reason and you, um, then you're thinking about like, oh my god, wait a second, that level 6 talent doesn't exist. They didn't change the game up that much. But yeah, Blizzard also announced the release date for Heroes of the Storm, by the way, in case that you didn't hear just yet. It is the 2nd of June and the open beta starts at 19th of May, so in just a few weeks, which is pretty awesome actually, it's really nice. So if you guys don't get, uh, didn't get your hands on the key just yet, on the 19th of May the open beta starts and you guys can play it too. And then later on we are going to uh, see the game released as well. can expect like one or two patches at least until then. It's going to be great, especially waiting for those content patches. Nice move against Dracula. Uther is all alone, eating damage after damage, but he gets away regardless. Yeah, I really like how Asa is currently playing it. I'm still not quite sure if that choice on Sergeant Hammer, uh, if I completely agree with that, considering that Sergeant Hammer was picked after we had Jaina in the game. And I always think that that is very tricky if Hammer is exposed to a blizzard. Oh, the push build on Sylvanas for SK with an uh, unstable poison poison arrow taken. And that means that if you kill a creep that is under the influence of on the effect of Black Arrow, which is the trait that you also apply with your abilities to uh, any kind of uh, creep or mercenary, then you let that thing explode and that gives Sylvanas an insane pushing power. It's really crazy. Like, th this is, it's a snowball reaction that happens. Boom, gone. And Sylvanas numbers, we're going to look at those later on. She is going to skyrocket there. Just to give you a bit of a comparison before we go over the rest of the talent. So looking at Sylvanas right now, he's currently... She, Look at that, she's currently already, she went from 16,000 immediately to 19,000. But let's just say she was at 16,000 at that point, all right? Second in the team, and uh, look at that a bit later. And also compare that, of course, to what we're seeing here on the other we side of the The hard camps are taken as the temple at the bottom lane is now starting to come to place. Amoni is fighting with Sypho, though. Oh, and at the top lane, there's also a bit of damage being pushed in. As we saw two heroes with BKB and Blow Your Brain trying to take these waves here down. 
Look how fast these waves explode. Bakery just uses his haunting wave, sends it in there, gets the uh, the arrow in, and then makes sure that the entire creep wave explodes. And BKB actually stands there for now and says, well, guys, I have to de-push that. If I don't, then suddenly we're going to lose that four to the hard camp, and we can't really afford to do that. So he moves back already. We're having Diablo in this case going for battle momentum, not going for the Endless Souls to make sure that he can even revive more often. And he doesn't expect that he's gonna die that much. So uh, that's uh, yeah, the focus on the battle momentum in this case. Uh, she can use to get a few more spells in if he keeps attacking her in those fights. Lane's still pushing. Everybody only has three, or every team has three heroes at the bot lane. The rest of them are still trying to make sure that they are pushing the lanes and get the experience. The NSK is starting to get the lead. Inexperienced, that is. They already have the level 10 talent. Bakery nearly eliminated the uh, fort at the top. We do not have a mule in this game. Oh, lightning breath on our Aragi. It's a bit more common these days of Diablo. Wow. The kill against ETC. Bakery, he wants the fort. He's not jumping in just yet. He just takes the fort down. Well done. Won't survive. I mean, they are going to take him down, but still, he killed it, and that's all that he needed to do. They got another one at the bot lane, which was important. Silvana's dying. But lightning breath is interesting here. They do not have a whole lot of lockdown. And that's an Oh, Sypho! Wow! Gets dropped, and ETC jumps in way too late. Slows them down, though, and goes straight in. Then we have the Reign of Vengeance, and here comes our Ragi with the Lightning Breath. In this case, it really helps them to retreat, but now we have Blow Your Brain and Drake are moving in, trying to get the lockdown here. Ah, but they don't really get it. Lightning Breath is a little bit more common these days. It's also one of the talents that you see on the, the Korean streams quite often. Once again, we don't really know how good those Koreans are just yet. Most of the teams are no real pro gamer teams, meaning that they actually have a day job and just play after that together. Uh, some of the teams are full pro gamers though, but we have, yeah, I feel like we have a huge difference in skill between a lot of the Korean teams at this point, but since we didn't see them play against any foreign teams in a long time, we don't really know how good they actually are. But over there in the meta, you oftentimes see Lightning Breath taken, and we had it in uh, the European scene a bit more often too. I think Alternate or Refuse was it on Blackheart Bay that tried to play it with Malfurion to lock the target down with Entangling Root, going for the Ferocious Roots and later a Tenacious Roots so, and use it. In this case, the opponent can still move away, so it's more a matter of zoning out your opponent, I want to say. I feel that it's stronger on Cursed Hollow where we occasionally see it, just so you have the small corridors where you can get a maximum value out of it. In this case, right now, they decided, since they don't have a setup with more or Zeratul Void Prison, they don't go for Apocalypse. Oh, and the fight for those Siege Giants is already happening. Dracker is low, but that's exactly where you can play with Lightning Grab. That's exactly one of these situations where it's great, because you try to zone somebody out, and they not only got a kill, but they also got the camp here, and now they have two kills. They're really starting to push the advantage. And Sergeant Hammer not doing anything in this case, claiming the temple at the bottom, but BKB is down, and Sypho, yes, the dog is going to take him on, and down goes Tassada. Suddenly, where is the tank? Alright, already moving back. So we have four heroes down, we have SK dominating this game so far, six kills against two. Looking again at Sylvanas, by the way, just to give you an idea about the, uh, the siege damage, look at that, 43,000 already. Illidan, interesting enough, is also on uh, 44,000, like that immolation really doing work, doesn't it? But yeah, you can see that those two heroes in terms of Siege Dang and which are doing an incredible job in Sylvanas is definitely going to surpass Illidan pretty soon here. Yeah. Uh, talking about Illidan, he needs to use his own rogue ability to jump away here. He's getting away into the safety range of the fort. We're having on the side of Diablo Spell Shield taken out. Oh, BKB gets healed. Uh, yeah. BKB gets healed, Zamoni as well by the way, Zamoni with the Ancestral Healing that was used by Rega, and once again, another Temple, this time getting a few shots in against that fort in the mid lane of SK Gaming, but that 13 talent is of course amazing for them right now, we're having Feral Lunge, which we already saw in action, with a sprint on Jaina, and this time it is Giant Killer, this time Giant Killer is actually used by Zamoni, different player, different style, doesn't go for the Evasion talent, but instead moves straight into that. We're having also now our Ragi with another position taken in one of those bushes. Uh, they have 26 seconds on the giants, on the siege giant camp over here. The hard camp, the bruiser camp was just taken by uh, Team Ace, and they have now their level 13 ability, which gives them a lot more control. That's going to be great for them in the team fights to have double shrink ray on two of their heroes, Tasta and Uther, and also of course that slower 
uh, that's frost shot. This is going to be a really, really good phase. Uh, it's going to make it so much easier for them to keep controlling the fights, but it's definitely not going to make the game itself any easier to come back into because they still are three levels behind and they lack the third talent. Or I want to say the. Uh, Tile number 6, since we're now on level 16, and we have triple blood for blood, northern exposure, and on, uh, yeah, and on Diablo we have currently the opposing presence. So they're starting to jump in again, Nasty is there in the back, where's Jaina? Not with the team just yet, ETC isn't either, and that Siege Giant camp that I was talking about earlier is currently taken. But yeah, they can't really move in to take anybody down here. SK is doing a dominant, dominant performance there. Yeah? Trying to jump in. Dracula is nearly dropped on Usa. Needed to use his spell shield. Aragi oh, is pushing everybody away. And that's, of course, the problem that you have when you run Diablo with that and you don't have lockdown that the opponent can simply move away. Now the heroic ability is in cooldown and you didn't really get any damage in. So ideally, you have stun or roots or something like that, even a slow with it. In this case, we don't. They could have gone into the Earthbind Totem on, uh, on Rhaegar, but I feel with the Triple Blood for Blood, they have pretty good chances of dropping a target very, very fast. So I kind of understand, and I also like that choice that they went for here. ETC already jumped out to team up with the rest of them. And if you look at the Siege damage right now, Sylvanas, of course, with that arrow on level 7, is at 66,000 already. Also leading the charts in the, the hero damage still. So a pretty interesting build there. If you want to have a lot of fun with her and just like, a bit more pushing power and you're not really too afraid of the, the the hero damage ability of your team if you have a couple of damage levels with you try that out unstable poison it's a pretty cool cool town to have it's really really fun to play around with. so right now oh oh wow nasty whoa did you see those blood for bloods he's still alive though Oh, he's still alive. They kept him alive, but not for long enough. Here comes the Divine Shield. They're trying to nasty, but now Sergeant Hammer is dead as well. The initial rescue was great. They were trying to engage into a 4 vs 3 situation, but that got turned around real quickly. Now three of their heroes are dead. They're jumping in. BKB is getting dropped here now too, and that leaves only Uther alive. Bakery is moving in and is just taking down everybody in his path. He can easily destroy these waves. That's what we've been uh, seeing him do the entire time, like all game long. And right now he's just disabling tower after tower, starting to push in, opening up, creating a lot of space for the rest of his team. And they are, of course, moving towards the boss that just spawned on the map again as our Ragi in the middle lane is taking that temple and is making sure that they're getting even more shots in against the structures of their opponents. Looking at the damage again, by now already 84,000, so since we checked the last time, which was only like a minute ago, 20,000 more siege damage on the side of Sylvanas. Pretty crazy, pretty impressive. The boss now taken to Nasty is moving back, but yeah, well, this is of course, this is a disaster from the point of view of Acer. They are trying, and they, I mean, what can they do? They can try and play passive. Look at Drakia dropping here, and the kill against Vala first, once again. The Storm Shield being used here, not Storm Shield, but of course Divine Shield on uh, Uther himself. Uh, BKB is so close to dying, they barely keep him alive. And now Sylvanas with a trade, with a black arrow, just shoots it in. And they're starting to take down one of the forts, or one of the keeps in the mid lane, as the boss is focusing on the one down at the bottom. They can move in, keep that boss alive, use that black arrow to disable the keep, at least for now. 16 talent is still not available for Acer. They are getting completely wrecked here. 11 kills against two, and that is not a pleasant feeling. We're having, uh, yeah, the boss doing his thing. It's actually interesting to see that they simply steal the caps away with a talent lead. I would have expected them to really just go for it and take the keep down. But apparently they are really trying to play it super safe here. I think killing that keep would have probably been the better choice, but it will die anyways. They take camp at the, the Siege Shine camp, they take the Bruiser camp, and the Siege Shines are going to eliminate the keep now regardless. So yeah, it's not going to survive. It was already way too low. But with the Black Arrow, they could have maybe even done more than that. They were fighting with a level 16 talent against a level 15 team, so they had all the chances there. It's not like they're going to lose the game now or anything, or that it necessarily was a bad choice. We have them with level 19, nearly 20. They played super, super safe there. And that's fine as long as you start exploiting your advantage when you're level 20, but I, I, to be absolutely frank, at this point, all that they have to do is play super passive and wait out the temple phases, because even if they, even if they just take the temple and then sit tight, the next temple phase is going to activate before Team Acer hits level 20. So they will always fight with the talent lead. Uh, if they wait, a few more experience points. 
Level 16 is now also ready for Acer, and they have an execution at Talon taken on Sergeant Hammer. Barla with a frost shot is of course going to help her a lot with that. Benediction imposing presence. We have the double storm here with the second strike, and one bullet for blood at least. As ETC at the bot lane, he's gonna start jumping in pretty soon at the top, I feel. Having already Zamoni gathering the shots in for his own team, and they are moving in already. They wanna get the last keep, and once those three keeps are down, a single temple will eliminate the core, if you allow that to your opponent. They're starting to move down to the bottom lane. It's actually a smart move, because they will at least get a few shots if they're fast. Yes, ETC already jumping back up to the top lane, and... Yeah, okay, it's just a trade at the end of the day. So, the keep here... Is it actually going to die? I don't even think so. I don't think that's enough. No, there, there's still a tower over there. It's definitely not enough. They're not going to get the keep. They're not going to get the last keep here. But they have a level 20 talent. And this is where Diablo with Lightning Breath starts to become a lot more fun. The Hellstorm? Hell yeah, but This is going to be a really nice one. Long, Like, you can get so much more damage in with that talent. We have also double storm, uh, sorry, double bolt of the storm, demonic form, and a storm shield. Blow your brain with a safe. Yes, that happens when you're up against uh, Jaina in this case. And the hell storm. Wow, that was the DPS just all of a sudden, and the immediate kill against Vala. And they also take down Sergeant Hammer. And they are about to take. Yes, there goes Tassada. GG already called. Just a bit of an idea of what the damage looks like. We have Illidan surpassing Jaina in uh, yeah in siege damage. That is pretty impressive. I didn't expect that at all. Either way, this game, of course, ladies and gentlemen, ending in favor of SK. They take the series, the best of three here at the ESL Major League, with a 2-1 victory over their opponent. And, yeah, congratulations to them. It was really well done. The game on Sky Temple deciding it all. And SK Gaming is victorious. They take it with a 2-1 against Acer. Very, very good play by them today. Both teams actually playing really well throughout the series, but at the end it's Acer taking it with a 2-1. Very good performance by them and congratulations, of course. Very entertaining, in my opinion. If you guys like the VOD as well and the games, make sure that you also upvote the video on uh, YouTube. Give it a thumbs up and if you have any questions, just drop a comment in the comment section. I'm going to see you guys soon with more Heroes of the Storm action on Color TV. Have a great day. Have a good week. Bye-bye.